So let's talk about a classic fragrance. So this is one that goes back to the 90s, the early 90s. So it's John Paul Gaultier Le Mal. Uh, so let's, let's talk about a little bit of the history behind uh, Jean Paul Gaultier and his uh, kind of fragrances. So Jean Paul Gaultier is like a fashion house. I don't know much about it, but basically um, his first fragrance was called Classique and it was a woman's fragrance and it was in Eau de Parfum. Uh, and uh, he kind of wanted to embody to embody his memories and kind of yearnings and it was created by Jacques Cavalier for Jean-Paul Gaultier in 1993. So he's a famous um, perfumer. He's uh, kind of a master perfumer. He's made Aqua di Chio and a lot of other like amazing sort of fragrances. So that was a classic, classique. There was a male equivalent to that called Le Mal, which we're going to talk about today and I've I managed to get my hands on one and I've been thinking about getting it for a while so that's uh, kind of been in my head to kind of uh, like get this classic fragrance and, and try it and I've been wearing it today and I have smelt it before so I'll give you my opinion on that. So Jean Gaultier is like kind of um, a fashion sort of icon I guess and he wanted his fragrance to be unique, rebellious and addictive because um, you know these are qualities that he kind of supports or kind of is uh, like all about basically um, and his love for fashion was also apparent and the bottle's design kind of shows that. So Lamal was created in 1995 by a different perfumer called Francis Cochin for uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier and um, so yeah uh, quick aside basically um, in the fragrance community there's like some debate about you know getting a certain older batch version which was created by a company called BPI and that was created since like 1995 to 2015 so that was like kind of the original company that kind of distributed and made the actual and manufactured the perfume uh, but that the, the fragrance arm of Jean-Paul Gaultier was bought by a company called Puig P-U-I-G and um, I don't know how you pronounce that but basically they took over and the fragrances you buy now are from that company made and manufactured by that company so I've got the older formulation or the older sort of uh, created by BPI and this is what it looks like this is what it looks like so yeah this is um, one of the older bottles I managed to find on eBay and um, it was a decent price and it's 125 milliliters. Um, I think it's the 2015 um, batch so it's kind of a newer batch and um, I've been wearing this for a couple of days so uh, yeah it's Lamal is described as a an ambery fougere fragrance which means it's like spicy and it's got like a witty sort of um, scent profile to it um, so herby, spicy, woody, but also it's quite fresh in this case. Um, it's quite versatile, I think. Like, I, I, I don't know what other people think, but basically I find it pretty versatile. You could probably wear this in different weather conditions, like uh, rainy days, um, autumn, spring, summer, uh, maybe even winter. Yeah, I don't see why... I can't think of an occasion where this would be a bad one to pick out of my collection so it's really good and as you can see the bottle design is pretty unique and back in the 90s when this was released um, as a bottle design it was considered like super different from other bottles like imagine like I don't know Chanel number no. 5 or something just like a basic bottle with the sticker and with Chanel or whatever like you know Fragrances were like that in the past, historically, and um, when this was released, I think it was like one of the first crazy bottle ideas that came out. Um, and this is meant to be a sailor's kind of outfit because the, well, the uh, perfumer kind of said when the bottle design was considered, it was, um, you know, this represents Jean-Paul Gaultier's kind of taste of like fashion and idea of a sexy, kind of elegant, um, dashing sort of man, male kind of masculine persona, um, this kind of embodied it. And normally you would have like a little kind of chain thing there um, to kind of prevent you from pressing the sprayer. But on my bottle, uh, I kind of, I got a tester. I think this is a tester. It didn't come in the can. So normally it comes in like a can. 
and this one came in just a, a, a brown kind of box because it's a tester basically um and it even says tester at the bottom i mean it's pretty unique it's pr even today like you don't get bottles like super crazy like this like you get some crazy bottles but they're still not really this kind of cool looking. So yeah, it's got a lot of woody, spicy notes and aromatic notes. So the top notes for this fragrance, you've got Artemisia, which I had to look up, but basically it's kind of a bittery sort of herbal, strong smelling plant note, which is kind of like from wormwood. So I do get some bitteriness, I think, on the top notes. I definitely get mint, uh, cardamom and bergamot. I get maybe a little bit of the cardamom, a little bit of the bergamot, um, which is a citrusy, bitter tart, kind of elegant, light note um, with a mild spicy tone. Uh, it's kind of quite fruity, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I get all of those notes. I definitely get the mint. It's very mint heavy on the top notes. So let me go ahead and, and spray this now so I can kind of give you what I'm getting. It's a, it's a really good sprayer as well. Get a lot that comes out. Oh yeah, okay. Mint. I think I get what is the Artemisia, because um, I get a lot of herbal, herbal kind of strong smelling, woody sort of smell as well. I'm not sure about the bergamot, and maybe a hint of cardamom, but it's not super obvious. But the main thing is, I get a huge. Kind of like a, it's not huge, but like kind of like a mintiness to it. Like if you're at the dentist, like a mouthwash kind of thing, but in a nice way. It's not in a weird sort of, I don't know, dentist kind of way. And the middle notes um, are lavender. So that's where you'd get the freshness out of this fragrance. You'd get a lot of clean sort of fresh fragrance. Like you just stepped out of the shower or um, you're just a very clean person. and. Um, but it's also aromatic, that's what lavender gives you. There's also orange blossom is one of the mid notes and cinnamon and cumin. I don't get any cumin. I don't really get any cinnamon. I mean, maybe like the sweetness of the fragrance is coming across with this, like the um, sort of, yeah, sweet and spicy, um, spiciness. And I do get like, you know, this, the kind of freshness maybe, or the, the kind of, a little bit of a floral note with the orange blossom. Um, and then the base notes where it, when it dries down is uh, you get a classic woody note from the sandalwood. So I do think, yeah, I get like the milkiness of the, the sandalwood a little bit in the background. Um, it's got vanilla in it, which adds to the sweetness and it's kind of like a, a base that kind of holds everything together, I think. Can, you don't like get vanilla separately, but I think it's definitely like the kind of sweetness kind of bringing and tying everything together. There's a woody, woody kind of dry down as well, which is maybe it's the cedar, because that's also a base note. Tonka bean is a base note. Um, tonka bean should smell kind of light, a bit milky, um, kind of, it usually, usually goes well with the sweet kind of ambery fragrances. But yeah. It might be, um, yeah, like an almond kind of scent to that. And amber is kind of the last base note, so that gives it the sweet, resinous, kind of warm sort of scent. A little bit powdery too, a little bit powdery. It's really, it's a really unique fragrance, I think. I mean, maybe there's like similar sort of things out there, but I definitely really know when I smell this that it is Lamal. The perfumer Francis Cochon said that, um, you know, this is quite a simple fragrance to kind of develop because of the vanilla in it. And at that time, I think a lot of fragrances had floral notes in it possibly because he said that when you have floral notes, it's kind of a much more complex fragrance, a much more difficult fragrance to kind of get right. And with the vanilla based fragrances like this one, um, it's easier to kind of blend, I guess. Uh, I think that's what he meant, and yeah, if you have any insights into that, I'm not a perfumer, so if you have any insights, please um, mention them in the comments below. So yeah, I think I would really recommend Le Mal. It's beautiful 
fragrance is a classic from the 90s and it kind of brings you back to that time. I mean, I wasn't wearing this or smelling this kind of around when I was in, in the 90s as a kid, but um, I think a lot of people were. So like if you're older, you'd probably have old kind of memories of, of this fragrance. But even if, if you're younger, I think it's a great one. It's a great one for like a young uh, man to kind of pick up. Like, you know, you're at uni or like if you're just starting your job and you want like an all-rounder, um, but also kind of like a something that kind of stands out from the super kind of uber sweet fragrances that are on the market right now. And yeah, I really, I really rate this one. It's, it's amazing. So yeah, thank you for watching and hope you liked the video. Um, and I'm going to do like maybe reviews every week um, on things that I like. Right now it's fragrances uh, mainly, but it could be different things that kind of interest me. So yeah, uh, if you like this video, subscribe and smash the like button. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.